Will the sexual impulse disappear if we don't give you a name? Response. I think this question requires considerable explanation. She was, uh, apparently, uh, caused by what we argued last night. The process of naming the designation is a very complex problem that we need to examine very carefully and accurately. We need to understand the process of consciousness. I regret this question, although formulated very simply, and so much. And if I respond very directly and concisely, those who have not watched yesterday's discussion are risky to misunderstand me. It is therefore necessary to get into the question very carefully, revealing all its content. Well, what do we mean by consciousness? This is not a question without appropriateness, as it is directly in relation to the problem. What do we mean by consciousness? Consciousness is undoubtedly a challenge and reaction, and therefore, experience. Such is the beginning of consciousness, challenge, reaction, and experience. The experience receives a name, a designation. We put you a pleasant or unpleasant label. And then it is recorded, basically kept in your mind. Consciousness, therefore, is a process of experimenting, name, and registering. Although complex, it is very simple. Please do not complicate it unnecessarily. Without these three processes, which actually constitute a unit process, experimenting, name, or designating, registering, classifying, storing, experience in memory. Without this process, there is no conscience. This process is in constant operation at different levels being instantaneous up. And this is what is called conscience. The song is repeated in different emotional states, with different themes, deeply. This is, in the deep layers of the unconscious or superficially, the surface of consciousness in our daily life. But it is always the same process of challenge and reaction, experience, denomination, and registration in memory. This is the theme. This is the disc that is playing. Now what would happen if the intermediate process, which is to name or designate, not be realized? That is, if the intermediate process were eliminated. Because we give designation, because we attribute a name to a feeling or experience, calling it pleasant or unpleasant, calling cholera, violence, good, evil, and so on. Why do we name an experience? To any of you this may seem technical, and it is not. It is very simple, although it requires a little concentration. We are almost all used to listening to political conferences, used to tell us what to do or what to think, and it may seem difficult to follow, calmly, a thought of this nature. But since it is not a political conference, we have to focus a little on it. Thus consciousness is a process of experimenting, named and registering. And why do we name an experience, a feeling? We name it, or in order to communicate the another person, or as an end to fix it in memory. This is to continue you. If there is no continuity, there is no mind, there is no conscience. I need to continue an experience, otherwise consciousness disappears. Therefore, I need to name the experience. Named a feeling, an experience, it's an instant thing. Because the mind, which is the recorder, memory, puts label in the feeling to give it substance, to continue it, so that it can examine it. What it means to continue the thought. After all, the thinking is the thought. And without the thought process, there is no permanence for the thinking. Thus, giving name to a feeling, an experience, gives permanence to the thinking. The registrar, which is the mind. That is, you name a feeling, an experience, and in this way, it continues you. And of that, the mind nourishes and feels it exists. Take any experience, any feeling or feeling you have, anger, hate, love. Giving you a name, you stabilizes the feeling or incorporate your reference structure. Thus, the very nature of name and experimenting is to continue consciousness, the self. This process is in constant operation, being so fast that we do not perceive it. This disc is being touched incessantly, at different levels, with different letters, with different words, during sleep and wakefulness. Well, what happens if you don't give in designation, if you don't name an experience? If you have no name to the various sensations, 
If nothing has saved, where's you? This is when it is not named, feeling or experience is extinguished. It has no continuity. Try this on yourself to see how it is like that. If you have a very strong nationalist feeling, what happens? You give you a name. The thought of idealism, love, my homeland arises. I mean, you give you a name and with that gives you continuity. It is very difficult to stop denominating because the process name is automatic, it's instantaneous. But suppose it wouldn't give a name to a feeling. What happens to that feeling? Certainly the registrar cannot identify with this feeling. It gives you no substance, gives you strength, gives you no vitality. That is why the feeling is extinguished. The first time you feel the feeling that calls irritation, give it no name. Don't say. Do not designate the feeling for a term and see what happens. You will see an extraordinary thing happens. The mind is disturbed because it displeases it in a state of uncertainty. The disturbance then becomes more important than the feeling. And the feeling is forgotten and the disturbance is. But the mind doesn't like to be disturbed, perplexed. Therefore, it requires safety and seeking security, certainty in its registration, in memory, with what strengthens the registrar. It is a truly fascinating thing to observe the process of our own conscience. But none of this is learned in a book. No book can teach you, and what a book teaches is not worth learning. You can only repeat what a book teaches, but if you experience and find out for yourself, then you are at the same time master and disciple, and no longer needs gurus, no books or anything, not even groups to be changing stickers. You then know how to attack the problem, how to attack any problem that arises for yourself. Being at the same time master and disciple, you know how your own consciousness works. It finds that when it does not name a sensation, this feeling, this feeling is extinguished. So you are able to say, I learned a great trick. I already know what to do with unpleasant feelings. Like then, by an end quickly, I will not name them. But would you do the same thing about pleasant feelings? It seems not to me. How much do you want pleasant feelings to continue? Do you want to give substance to pleasant feelings? Want to keep them? For this reason, it continues to name them. But that, that is no use. Because the moment it gives its name when applying a term to a feeling that it finds pleasant is inevitably creating the opposite aim. And therefore, it will always have the conflict of the opposites. But if it gives no name, if it does not label a sensation, whether it is pleasant or unpleasant, both will fade. And therefore the thinking who is the creator of the opposites is extinguished. Only then will we know what love is, because love is not sensation. You can name you, but when you call you, you are designating the sensation of love, which is not love. When you love someone, what happens? When you think of someone, what happens? It is actually busy with the feeling of such a person. You are interested in this sensation. And the more importance you attribute to the sensation, the less love exists. Well, we already extend too much here, but the question is, Will the sexual impulse disappear if we do not give you a name? It will disappear, of course. But if you do not understand the whole process of consciousness, as I explained very carefully, the simple fact of ending a certain pleasant or unpleasant impulse does not give rise to that eternal quality of love. Without love, the simple fact of putting an impulse has no meaning, as this will make you as arid as the idealist, whose passions are kept under the strictest control. Because if you do not understand the whole process of consciousness, the passions will always be present, even if they do not give them names. Understanding the whole process is very difficult. You may have understood the verbal expressions of what I have just explained, but their living meaning, their intimate meaning, you can only understand by experimentation. As I already had occasion to say, when there is love, there is chastity. The man, the idealist who wants to be chased, who wants to be disappeared, this man will never know love. Because he interests him only to become something, which represents another form of selfishness. It is committed solely in this struggle to reach, to reach its ideal that is non-existent. That's why this man has an empty heart. And this empty heart, he fills with the things of the mind. 
And how can he know love with a heart impregnated with ideal that is one thing made by the mind? Therefore, it is a very complex and subtle problem, this issue of bearing designation to name. But you understand it if it is to experience extraordinary riches. There is an extraordinary depth in understanding this process of giving a feeling. A feeling. Once you have opened its doors, you will discover huge treasures. But to find out, we need freedom to experiment. And freedom comes with virtue. We do not become virtuous, but to be virtuous.